Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Hey Outlaws and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode we are going to be doing something slightly different today. We are going to be looking at CVC and we're going to be going over everything. So stick around and I'll tell you what's in store. Now the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over CVC rules that have existed since beta. Those rules are going to be laid out plain and simply so everybody understands them. Now after we've laid out the rules for everybody we're going to be meeting up with my friend Mr Fug Life and we're going to be showing you how to shoot through brick walls. Now I know what some of you guys are going to say Destiny why are you teaching us such a toxic move but this actually is extremely important and you'll find out why. And next on the list, Thug Life is going to be taking us around different locations, popular locations that are used in CVC today. And after that, we're going to be taking a trip back in time to see where CVC rules came from in the first place, who invented it and what the aim was. We're going to be taking a look at the different clans that used to exist and how they used to use this. And just for the f*** of it, we're going to be comparing it to the type of players that exist today. Also just a slightly closer look at how CVC today has come partly corrupt and what the issues are surrounding it. And last on the list we're going to be looking at why standard FPS is the way forward for this particular type of fighting, all the tips and tricks that can be used and some insane movements so you guys can get a better understanding of how it works. So let's dive into some of the rules. Now if you are approached on the game and somebody says let's have a CVC fight it either means crew versus crew or comp versus comp. Obviously you can figure out what crew versus crew means and of course comp versus comp means competitive versus competitive. So you're competing under a strict set of rules. Okay so in CVC you can only use green and yellow ability cards, no blue cards whatsoever, you can't use things like never without one or fool me once or anything like that. You also can't use rifles, bows or horses and it has to be agreed to fight on rooftop. You can't use any craftables like E-rounds or anything like that but you can use split point bullets. Now dynamite has to be agreed by both parties. If one person opposes this then dynamite is not to be used including if you're in teams. And originally tier 3 and minty game are not allowed but people are still going to use them anyway. And remember guys, this is PIB only, so don't bring Slippery or SNS. Now moving on guys, I hope everyone is as happy as I am to find out that Rockstar have finally patched near enough every single glitch. The beaver hood reattachment is gone, you can't reattach your hat no more. The defensive glitch, thank god, has gone also. No more tonic glitching. And the only question that's still left in my mind is why on earth has it taken Rockstar so long to patch these things when they've been a problem for such a long time? And an even bigger question, what on earth is gonna f up next? due to the weak ass servers that Rockstar are using. I could give you a list of things that have messed up for me, but to be quite honest, I can't be bothered. However, in other news, big shout out to these guys, the Swedish bastards. Oh, we are from Sweden. Now, let me tell you about these dudes. Now, it's refreshing to hear that a posse is actually going around Red Dead hunting cheaters, 
griefers with an absolute no-nonsense policy. And these dudes seem like the real deal to me. So big shout out to TSB, Morris and the group. Keep up the good work. Okay guys, bringing in Mr. Fug Life, we're gonna be going over the wall breach. First of all, just a quick background on how me and Fug Life met. It's a miracle how me and him are actually friends today. Since we've been through several posse wars against each other, we started off as enemies that held no respect for each other. And it's all because of one toxic cheating that existed in my own actual posse. However, he was kicked for being a lying, traitorous, manipulative, PayPal hacking little scumbag. But that's a story for another time. Now on to Mr. Thug Life. I met Thug about a year ago and Thug Life was one of the best PIB artists I'd ever seen on this game. I mean, I saw this dude whip the <laughs> one of the best players that I had in my posse and it wasn't even close. It was so one-sided, it wasn't even funny. But Thug has been around since beta and there's nothing he doesn't know about this game. Feel free if you have any questions about CVC or back in the beta days, anything like that, contact Thug on his Discord account. There's no question that he doesn't have the answer to. This man is a miracle. Okay guys, now shooting through walls, what I'm going to do is Thug is going to show you how this is done and then I'm going to explain to you why everyone needs to be made aware of it. Now it's quite simple, as you can see Thug has painted his opponent, he's then made his way around to the wall, he's pushed himself up against the wall and as you can see the gun is now facing upwards and this is pretty much indicating that when you fire it's going to be a clean headshot now this type of move you could be pushed up against absolutely anything a rock a wagon it's still going to work in the exact same way and the easiest way to be able to identify someone using this move is they will be maneuvering in and out of objects and then they'll be behind the object and then you're dead now this particular move like i said it works on any object whatsoever if you wanted to try this move out just to see if it works then I would recommend doing it on NPCs and not players but the thing is is there is a big issue with this particular type of move and it's definitely surrounding CVC players of today but we'll come back to that. Now the reasons why I'm showing you guys this move there's really two reasons behind it and one of them is to raise as much attention to it as possible Rockstar obviously have just patched a number of glitches and this needs to be another one. And the second reason is how many times have you guys been in a showdown, even a free roam fight or anything like that where you can't see your opponent and out of nowhere you've been headshotted. It's such an important thing to know how you're dying every single time for the sake of improving. But if you don't know how you're dying, you're certainly not gonna be able to make those improvements. But people have been doing this for a long time and quite frankly, the community just doesn't have the answers, but now you do. And it's thanks to veterans like Thug Life that are willing to come forward and say, this is what people were doing. This is why we're getting headshotted from players that we're not even seeing. And now we have the answers guys. So next time you're on the battlefield, and someone's behind a rock and you've been killed out of nowhere, now you know what they're doing. Okay guys, in other news, as you are aware, Rockstar have patched the defensive glitch, but the day before the defensive glitch was actually patched, we got wind of this dickhead Volts was in the showdown series, running around in defensive, acting like a complete prick. So me and the crew decided to get suited and booted, and we thought we'd go in there to chase him out of every session and make him look like a complete and using defensive mode we knocked him out of defensive and he looked like a complete idiot since the fact that this dude can't even free aim properly as you can see he's standing there with a lancaster taking shot after shot and he doesn't know how to kill people using defensive 
when he's got lock on and guess what happened to him while he was trying to deal with somebody in defensive mode someone that had a clear lock on him killed him this is exactly what i was talking about in the first place while defensive mode is so toxic you can't use it in a showdown series like this it was not made for something like this and guess what happened when he lost the shootout series and came out of defensive mode he left the session every single time because he's nothing but a cowardly little scumbag and i want to put it out there for everybody that if this guy shows up absolutely anywhere with a scorecard that says he's got between 10 and 20 kills and no deaths it means nothing the man is a defensive glitch cheat that's how he got the scorecard no one is going to take him seriously before the defensive glitch he barely came in the top five now i don't know about you guys but it's pretty clear to me that this man grew up on a farm whose parents were brother and sister that's how this man was created and if any of you guys sees him in a showdown series blow this prick up grief him it's what he deserves he's one of the worst cheats i have ever come across in the history of red dead online now guys we're going to be moving on to the cvc locations now as you can see in the background it's pretty much in every single feud point that you can have in the game however thug life is going to be taking us to the most popular and favorable locations that are in cvc today okay guys now location number one on the map it's going to be the ruins area that's currently by armadillo now this is certainly a decent area to conduct combat since there's a lot of things around to use to your advantage and it's definitely the type of area where you and the rest of your posse can come up with different strategies in beating your opponent there are a few downsides to using this area but we'll discuss that later on in the video and even if you're not into CVC, this is certainly a fun area just to practice with your friends in general. And remember that you need to be in the area that you wish to feud in. And you do this by killing your opponent or a member of the opposite posse. And then they send the request to feud. And remember guys, when you accept the feud, you'll have an option to fast travel to that designated feud point. Try not to spawn kill anybody as they arrive there and try to start off at designated points. Now, another favorite CVC location, we're off to Emerald. Now, the thing about Emerald is it's a decent area to fight in. It's especially good for posse feuds. It does have a decent amount of space surrounding it, but there are still opportunities for people to camp here. So make sure you agree upon dynamite. And this really forces your strategy to be based around the land, using the hilltop, blind shooting, and outsmarting your opponent. But remember guys, these popular locations might be favored by everyday CBC fighters, but it doesn't mean you necessarily have to fight there. You can fight anywhere on the map, there's hundreds of feud spots and it's down to you to negotiate the situation. And if you have any trouble negotiating these terms and conditions with anybody, just f*** them off because at the end of the day, they're trying to manipulate their own advantages. Now, moving on and in other news, guys, big shout out to I, Hinosis I, who now has changed his name. But big shout out to you, big man, for showing me a scorecard from a team group dino arrow match from a year ago where you got mvp for most dino arrow kills for your team and on the strength of this scorecard he believes that he should now be running my channel but since i recalled absolutely everything and have been for the past year now i managed to get this footage on i hinosis i where i'm smacking the absolute clap out of him now i'm not being funny guys but this is not a good player this is not a skilled player and as you can see by his movements, he looks shockingly bad. But when I actually showed him this footage from an all against all showdown series and told him to wind his neck in, he tried telling me that this was not him. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? But I think you'll find when you break things down just a little bit more, you'll see that a year ago on this score sheet, he was level 231. And a few months ago, he was level 258. But dude, you're absolutely right. This is definitely not you getting smacked up and being made to look like a little bitch. Stop fucking lying. 
So a massive shout out to you, big man. Big man, Hinosis, change your name, whatever you want to call yourself. Nice movement. Now guys, it's time to take that trip back in time. Now I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank Mr. Fug Life for joining me in this video. Without his brain and knowledge, this video would not have existed. Now the legend has it guys that a few years back in beta there was a posse called Gods and that stands for the Gathering of Deities and these are the guys that invented CVC rules. Now I'd done as much research as possible in terms of Gods and also the feuds that used to take place back in the day and everybody that honoured this code. Now it looked very very clear to me when researching this that these guys were very much before their time the type of strategies that they actually came up with they're outclassing posses that are well known today and to be absolutely honest it's actually a breath of fresh air to see such an organized posse that goes in to a shootout series or takeover series and really looks at winning the objective and that's the type of organization that you don't see today. The usage of up aim with dead eye was really being used at the earliest opportunity, as was using your surroundings as a group to defeat and outsmart your opponent. And you're really looking at a group of people that took advantage of every opportunity that the game had to offer. People that weren't complaining about what Rockstar should or should not be doing. They're really just spending their time mastering the game. Now legend has it that you won't really find much of this posse around today and neither will you find some of the old school clans that used to exist. Now a few questions that have certainly come up in my mind is if some of these players are either still playing today or if they were around today how would they fare up against some of the insane movement that we've got now and to be quite honest guys the answer is absolutely they would have evolved with this type of gameplay they'd be very much aware of it they would know how to counter certain things and the way they used to do things back in the day they would certainly have no problem dealing with a majority of the posses that we see today and one thing you can absolutely count on by viewing these videos you'll actually see that they did adopt the RNG style that you see so much today also And speaking about knobs, No Mercy has blatantly fallen off the wagon again and he's making more videos about Cronus to try and sell scripts for his friend. Take a look at this. So when you've read that very carefully guys, you'll be thinking just like this. Why the fuck you lying? Okay guys, so as we come towards the conclusion of this video, my opinion of the problems with CVC players today is pretty simple. Now back in the day, it's true that they used to go into a shootout series with two different competitive teams and they used to play out these CVC rules within the showdown series and they used to kick out anyone else who wasn't part of the crew but in this day and age that we're living in now you get a bunch of dickheads running around thinking that everyone has to abide by some sort of cvc made up kind of rules and that exists in showdowns today when quite clearly it has no effect on showdowns today that's why you receive messages from these toxic players saying stupid things about what you can use what you shouldn't be using what makes you a noob and there's just no place in the community for idiots like this it's a made up set of rules, yes, but these people make it a hundred million times worse when they're running around making up rules of their own. They're absolute idiots. Now, the problem with CVC today is the wall breach. If you agree to go and do a CVC with somebody, all they're gonna do is camp, paint you, shoot you through the wall. Every single CVC fighter today that's toxic and ones that I've displayed on the channel are no different. However, with the help of this video, you guys out there are a lot more knowledgeable and won't be taken for idiots. If you agree to a CVC with anybody, make sure the rules are clear and it's fair for both parties. If you get anybody that shoots you through a wall, clip it and send it to me. Now, if you feel more comfortable doing a 1v1 CVC rules, first to 10 or first to 20, because you don't want to come across a time limit camper that wants to shoot you through walls, and if they then turn you 
down for doing that, then they're the noob, they're the ones that are ducked, because apparently they're the experts that can't get 10 or 20 kills on someone. And last thing on the agenda, guys, is the standard FPS movement and why it's beneficial. Now, if you watch closely here, guys, me and Thug are doing a spin battle, and the thing is, is by Thug using standard FPS, he can just tap on the A button to come up and down with his spins. It works very simple. If you watch me spin to shoot him, that's where his head would normally be. But as he's popped up from the spin, he has gained an advantage because his head is not in the same place. Now, this is the same spin that you're seeing here. And if you've seen my video on how to spin fast in battle, all you're really doing is changing your settings to standard FPS and you're using the A button to come around and pop up every single time. It takes a long time to get used to guys just like anything else. Thug's advice to absolutely everybody is to change over to standard FPS, get used to it and don't change back. Now a simple way of doing this, instead of trying to just spin and come up and down at the same time, get used to just tapping on the A button, coming up and down and going for the headshot kill. And when you get used to that, you can then start to spin and then using the A button to come up and down and you'll see how it works. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. I can appreciate that this is a long one, but there was just so much to put out there in terms of CVC rules. Thank you for everyone that subscribed to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video.